But number 13, we are given right triangle, triangle PQR, and then we are trying to find out the length of the side PQ. It's right here, this side. As we can see, we are dealing with sides of a right triangle, therefore we have to use the Pythagorean theorem. And let's take a look right here. Here we have three right triangles, and they are right triangles because they all have these little squares. The little square means that it is a 90 degree right angle. When a triangle has a 90 degree right angle, then it's called a the right triangle. And we can only use Pythagorean theorem on right triangles. So this is how we demonstrate on how to use the Pythagorean theorem. For all the right triangles, it doesn't really matter on how you draw them, they will always have a longer side. For example, the first one, the longer side is right here, isn't it? I'm just going to focus on that first, I will color this in red. And the longer side of a right triangle actually have a special name. It's called the hypotenuse of the triangle. But then at the moment, I'm just going to label this as C. Likewise, we'll do the same for the second one. For the second one, this is the longer side. I will color this into red, and now label this as C. And for the third one, here is the longer side, and then I will label this as C. We have to label the longer side as C first, and that's the biggest insist when we're trying to use the Pythagorean theorem. And now let's finish the labeling for the first right triangle. We have two more sides, and we're just going to label them as A and B. But then it doesn't really matter on how you want to pick the A or B. For example, this side, I get to label this as A or B, doesn't matter. I'm just going to put down A right here, so I can put down B right here, and I will finish labeling for the first right triangle. For the second one, I'm just going to put down A right here, then B right here, and then for the third one, I'm going to put down A right here, and then B right here. Now we have the labelings, here's the formula for the Pythagorean theorem. It says, for all the right triangles, once you have the labelings correctly, we always get a square plus b square, and that will give us c square. So this is the formula from the Pythagorean theorem. And now we can move back to the original question. For our original right triangle, here is the longer side. So I'm going to color this side to be red, and I'm going to label this as c. And that's the only insist, isn't it, to figure out the longer side first. And then I'm just going to label this side as A, and this side as B. If you want to call this side A, oh, it's okay, because A and B doesn't really matter, only C matters. And I'm going to write down the formula again, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, from the Pythagorean theorem. And I'm just going to plug in numbers into this formula, and then solve for the unknown. A, we don't know, that's what we're trying to find out, so just keep it as a square, and then I will maintain the plus, the b, we know that's equal to 3, so putting the 3 for b, and then raise that to the second power. And this will be equal to c square, and we know c is equal to 5, so we have to put in the 5 for c, and then raise that to the second power. Then, we worked out the powers. We keep the a square though, because we don't know what it is yet. We have a square, and then we add, 3 squared, that's 3 times 3, so we have 9. And that will be equal to 5 squared, 5 times 5, that will give us 25. At the moment, notice that this is actually a typical algebra question, because what we're doing here is solving a quadratic equation, right here. Then let me just show you guys how we can get the answer at this stage. This question now is just asking us, A, it's a number that we don't know yet. After you raise that to a second power, and then you plus 9 to it, you will end up with 25. It's kind of hard to think about what number can satisfy A, right? But then we only have 4 possible answers, namely right here. So what we can do, and this is really just like a test taking strategy. Let me just demonstrate the idea. Let me pick A for the answer. If A is the answer, that we're saying is 2 is equal to A. I'm going to plug in 2 into this A to see if it works or not, okay? So I'll focus on the A right here, and then I get a 2 from choice, capital A. So I'll put in the 2 right here, it looks like we have 2 squared, and then plus 9, just like this. And now, do we end up with 25? Well, let's see, this is 2 squared, that will give us 4, and then we add 9 to that. 
What's four plus nine? That's thirteen. Of course, thirteen is not the same as twenty-five. So we know that capital A right here is not the answer. Well, we don't have three more tries, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Next, I would like to pick answer choice B, four. That means I'm going to plug in four into this A. So I'm going to get four to the second power and then plus nine to that. Do I end up with 25? And then for the four square, that means four times four. We have 16. And then if we add nine to that, you see that 16 plus nine, we do end up with 25. So we know that choice B will be the answer to this question. And that's how we can make good use of the answer choices to help us figure out the right answer for this question. But unfortunately, we may not always have the answer choices in front of us. Therefore, for future benefit, let me pick that from here to show you guys the algebra steps to solve this question. So I'll put it right here. A squared plus 9, that will give us 25. And this is how we are going to do it. A squared plus 9, we will first get rid of the plus 9. And the opposite of plus 9 is to subtract 9. So we will minus 9 right here, and now do the same right here. The positive 9 minus 9, they will cancel out. And then we will have A squared, and that's equal to 25 minus 9, that's 16. And now you can just ask yourself, what number squared that you will get 16? And the answer to that would be 4, right? And that's pretty much the same as what we got over there as well. But then the procedure on doing so is, to get rid of the square, we take the square root on both sides, so that the square and the square can be cancelled on the left-hand side. And then we can end up with a is equal to square root of 16, that will give us 4. And I want to make a small remark. Here we are talking about the size of the right triangle, so it's always going to be positive. We are not going to consider negative numbers right here. A is equal to 4. That will be the final answer. So two ways. Once again, let me know which way do you guys like better. That's it for the question though.